<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Apparently, uh, YouTube has changed this countdown thing, and Ryan's going, wait, the clock vanished. I don't know what's going on. But good morning to you all. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. And of course, if you're watching this not live and you want to skip past the morning pleasantries, scroll down. There'll be a link to the beginning of the actual show. So, um, hi. So something came in the mail yesterday while I was away, mildly ill. As you can hear, I'm still not fully up to par here, but I couldn't possibly stay away another day and not open these things for you guys. Now, I know we've already done an unboxing, but this is um, this is a real unboxing, meaning this is a brand new product, not yet opened, whereas the other one was one that had been you know, passed around the country a dozen times. So the box was a little abused. So this is this is truly a brand new a brand new uh, opening here. Now the comments, uh, the chat room is wildly active already, which is fantastic, love that. So let's just take a quick scroll back and see what is, oh look, the top of the, Okay, I've already lost the beginning of, this, of the chat. That's how much stuff is happening. So if you chatted something in the very beginning, like when you first logged in and it was a while ago, you're gonna have to repost it because I, I've, it's, it's already scrolled off into Never Never Land. Um, and remember, do at me. Do just do at Photo Joseph while you're typing so it highlights so at least I see what you're saying if you wanna get, to, get my attention. There's too many things going on for me to uh, read every single comment, so at me to do that. Or, of course, if you want to help contribute to the show, there is that little super chat button, and that will definitely, definitely get my attention. So, good morning, everybody. Jess said something about feeling better, and it just scrolled off screen, and it's gone now. So, Jess, thank you very much. Um, if you said more than that, repost it, because it just disappeared. Uh, some talk about GH5s being pushed back another week, delivery constraints. I'm, I'm not that surprised. It's been a very, very popular camera, and I have zero idea how many of these things Panasonic has actually shipped on day one. Not a clue. So hopefully you guys are all getting yours very, very soon. Uh, let's see here. Ryan is pointing out that I was sick yesterday. Yes, Serge, I was sick yesterday. You can still hear it. I, I just, you know, my, remember my kid was sick last week? <laughs> kids, they're walking viruses, I'm telling you, man. Viruses with legs, that's what little kids are. Uh, joy, joy, joy. All right. A um, lot of chatter, nobody else calling out my name, so I think we're just gonna get this thing started, right? Why not? We've got a good number of live viewers in here. Uh, so, you know, let's just do this thing, right? Shall we? Shall we? We shall. Everything's good, audio's five by five, or however it is that they say that. I think we're good, let's do it. Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice, Photo Mon Moment, Mo Photo Moment, I know what my show is. First live daily show on the photos and the videos on the YouTube every weekday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not watching live, you could be and you should be. It's fun to tune in live, you get to comment and I can respond to you directly here. So, good morning everybody. I have in my hot little hands here a brand new GH5 and a brand new Leica 12-60 to lens. I'm very excited about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. This uh, this is going to be an unboxing of this. You know, I know that we did an unboxing before. We'll link to that up here. You click on the little eye thing, you get a link to it. And in that unboxing, I because it was the first time I'd ever seen it, one of the things I focused a bit on was the HDMI lock. Um, I'm not going to demo that live today because we've already done that. But if you do want to see how that works, you can go back and watch that other video, scrub around and find the point where we did that. Um, but for today, what I really want to do is actually see what's in the box have this totally brand new unboxing experience because we just haven't um, we haven't done that because we haven't had a brand new one. The one that I had before was a many many timed opened box that had been passed around the country many times between the uh, the Panasonic team. Um, one other thing before I open these that I wanted to mention: there was last well, see, I, I guess it hit on Monday over the weekend. There was this chatter about oh my God, what's happening with Panasonic? Is the Lumix brand getting shuttered? All because of this ridiculous speculation article that was posted on the Nikkei, which then just spiraled out of control. And Panasonic has issued a formal response to this. And there is an article that I want you guys to read if this is still a question in your mind, because basically this came down to speculation, which was fake news, which was based off of an article, um, a restructuring press release from back in September. And then someone just went way off the rails, predict how happened, completely untrue. So the real story can be found today. You can read this at, and we will put a link to this in the show notes. It's not there yet, but we'll put it in there. Well, it's there if you're not watching this live. Um, where's my computer? Here we go. This is on the EOS HD website. So you can see the URL at the top, but you know, eoshd.com slash blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure if you just Google Panasonic Lumix, use this word accelerate on EOS HD and you'll find it. Structuring that happened, that was announced back in September is if anything, it's gonna make production of the Lumix line even faster. So this is a great article with real quotes in there. Um, 
real discussion with Panasonic. So that is the story. Um, anything less than that is just ain't true. Okay, so that out of the way, let's open this thing. We're gonna start with the. Let's take a look at what's in this GH5. Let's see. I'm gonna check my remote camera here. Make sure. Oops, that would be the wrong camera. Uh oh, why isn't that on? Oh, that's not good. Why isn't my remote camera working? It's plugged in. Oh, hold on. I was messing around with it the other day, and I unplugged it. That might be necessary. Excuse us. Excuse us. We'll be right back here. Amazing how much works when it's plugged in to the HDMI port. There we go. There's my remote camera. Woohoo! There's the pen. Let's get this water out of the way. There's our lovely, lovely GH5. So there we go. Well, let's open this bad boy up and let's see what we got. Description of everything that it comes with, of course. Sorry I don't have a top-down camera. This would be a good time for a top-down, but unboxing isn't really my thing, so, you know, live with it. Um, ooh, this is the first actual user guide type stuff I've seen. Oh, a Micro Four Thirds lens lineup. Ooh, this is nice. Ooh, look at this. Okay, so if you ever wondered if there's enough lenses, does this have a full... Not a full list, but there's a nice little photo of all the lenses that you can get. That's cool. Okay, nice. Warranty card, manuals. Okay, honestly, this is really not the best view, is it? Sorry, guys. Uh, basic owner's manual. Oh, that's in a different language. And then a whole a dedicated guide to 6K photo. This is kind of cool. So you get a whole thing about shooting in 6K, 4K photo that explains how that works, which is good because it's one of those easily overlooked but incredibly powerful, awesome features. So yay to that. All right, let's see what else is in this way. This is the lieu of a top-down view. It is the side view. All right, we don't need to see that. Let's just do it this way. Looks well, lovely, untouched by human fingerprints. Camera. Here we go. Ready? Let's see how we're gonna do this. We'll do it like this. We'll go like this. Set it like that. Ta-da! There she is. Okay, you've seen one a dozen times on the show before, but there is a brand new one. I'm almost afraid to touch it. I don't want fingerprints on it. It's so nice without fingerprints on it. There she is. There's the camera. Lovely, lovely. Let's see what else is in the box. All right, what else we got in here? Oops, wrong. Come here, you switch. All right, strap. Yeah, I gave you a lecture before on straps. Nice little GH5 strap. Advertising the camera that you're carrying on your shoulders seems like a really bad idea to me, especially when it's the hottest new camera on the market. Probably a good way to get the thing ripped off. Power cable. Uh, this is probably the uh, USB-C, yep, USB-C cable here. So if you are one of those fortunate enough to have the new Apple MacBook Pro Touch thing, there's USB-C. Although, I don't know if I should say lucky enough. I'm really not keen on that new laptop with the, the touch thing, I guess, is kind of cool. But losing so many ports, losing a SD card slot? I don't know, man. I don't know about that one. Okay, uh, the charger. Of course, you will be needing that. Um, which, again, same model charger that shipped with the GH4, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see, we'll come back to that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Zach is asking when the GH5 will be shipping to normal customers. They are. They already are. Lots of people have them in their hands, but lots of people are also being told that it's not ready quite yet because, I guess, backlog. There's a lot of them, and, you know, resellers all get an allocated amount. It depends on where you bought it and when. Battery. I'm interested to see how charged this battery comes, so we're going to plug that thing in. And then the HDMI guy. So this is that really cool... HDMI bracket we talked about that I talked about in the beginning. I'm not going to demo how this thing attaches exactly, um, but it cable goes in, wraps around, this screws into the side port where you have a full size HDMI. It attaches to this and it holds onto that cord. Really an awesome thing. And you know what's funny is because uh, what's funny is that. I've done a little bit of work with this with an HDMI cable, and the full-size HDMI cable is so much more solid than the little tiny, I don't know, mini or micro, whatever the heck it's called, cable that was on all, is on all the previous cameras. Um, it's so much more solid that you almost don't need this, but now you've got this and the HDMI full-size port, so really you're just, it's just win-win. It's, it's awesome. Um, very, very robust, very solid. I'm stoked to have that. I think it's a really cool feature, and I guess... That's everything in there. All right, so there is a unboxing of this lovely camera. Let's take a look at 
the lens next. Let's see what is in there. Oh, I wanted to see how much battery we get. So let's just pop this guy in there. Hey, here's a tip for you. So this, I did it one of my earliest photo moments. We'll, we'll link to this up here. Um, I did a tip on how to manage multiple batteries, multiple memory cards, as far as numbering your batteries and numbering your cards. It's a super simple idea, but it's one of those that when I thought of it, I thought video about it and tons of other people went, oh my God, that's great. Why well, did I never think of that? So watch that video. It's a really cool little idea on how to keep track of which cards and batteries are full and which ones are empty. So, you know, full batteries you want, empty cards you want. So you keep track of them. Dead easy, dead, dead easy system to do it. Doesn't matter where they go in your bag. So watch that video, it's kind of cool. Uh, all right, so pop this guy in, let's see. I just wanna see how charged the thing comes. So we're gonna flip this guy around, go to, the, go to the front view, tilt that so you can see the screen, fire her up. Oh, you know it's gonna ask me all kinds of stuff, but it looks like, it looks like the battery's almost dead. <laughs> so they're not shipping with a full battery. So you can just set your language, set my language, please set the clock, I'm not gonna do all that now. Um, so, all right, so it doesn't ship with a full battery. What can I tell you? At least mine didn't. Okay, let's get into the lens. Uh, let's get rid of this and this, and this is a thing of beauty. So the lens, we've talked about this a fair amount. I had one of these, um, oh, Sarah's just saying that I'm bound by the Panasonic live show at B&H that starts in 20 minutes. Yes, it does, and I actually have that on my screen so that I can show that to you. So let me just pull that up right now just to make sure you guys don't miss it. In 20 minutes, so I will be done by then, there is a special live stream event at the B&H website um, on the GH5. So 1 p.m. Eastern, that'd be 10 a.m. Pacific. Definitely, uh, definitely check that thing out. I think it's gonna be awesome. I know Sean's gonna be there among other people. All right, let's get into this. If I can figure this out. I guess you have to be smarter than the box. It's a bit of an ask here, honestly. All right, what have we got here? We have in here a lens cap and lens bag. Very nice, so a lens shade rather. The lens shade on this is awesome because it's a locking lens shade. So this I love, we'll come back to that. A little pouch. I don't know how many people actually use these. I think I have a drawer full of these pouches, but there you go. I guess if you're gonna throw this thing in your suitcase and don't wanna have other stuff, that's a good option. Uh, let's see here, what do you got? User guide wise, little owner's manual. It's a lens, I'm not sure how much of an owner's manual you need. And Look at that thing, thing of beauty. This is a really, really nice lens. So you've got your power optical image stabilization on and off, and then your autofocus switch to manual or an autofocus. I really like having the switch on the lens itself. It just makes it a lot faster and easier. I don't know, maybe that's a bit of a misnomer. I mean, the thing is right under your thumb on the GH5, that would be right there to switch between them. So I don't know, I, maybe it's not faster. It's just an option. It's actually, it's, it's more handy on some of the camera models I'm trying to remember which ones. Some of the camera models don't have that autofocus switch right there, so that could be handy for that. Um, anyway, stabilization on the lens setting is really cool. And as I was saying, this locking lens shade, I really like this. So we put this guy on here and put that guy on there. Let's find the right dots, line them up. There we go. Line up the white dots and listen. Ah, look at that, locked. Locked. Now here's a little tip for you. It's something I discovered the hard way. So this has a little release button on it, right? So push that to release it so it can come off. Once, there we go. Once it's on, it stays on. So this though can get bumped. And so what I learned this the hard way, let's see here. Camera, I guess like this, but it doesn't matter. So I'm carrying the camera down and this ended up bumping against my leg or thigh or whatever, and it bumped and twisted and it fell off. And I'm going, how, what, it's locking, how did this fall off? And then I realized because of, it was the direction that the button was pushed. So, so if you want to, if you're running into that problem, there you go. Now, the release is a really good tip with this, of depending on how you carry your camera. If you find that you're bumping that, just know that that quick release can be rotated. Just rotate the lens shade the other direction and then it'll be on the other side. So super handy for that. Um, but I really like that lens shade. So this lens, that's, yeah, that's all that's in there. Um, this lens, as I have talked about before, 
I'm really impressed with the lens. It's a very good, very sharp, very uh, fast to focus lens. Optical stabilization is great, et cetera, et cetera. The only complaint would be that it's when it gets to 60, it's at f4, it's not at 2.8. So, you know, that's just what it is. It's a variable aperture lens. Unlike the 12 to 30, which is fixed 2.8 all the way through. The 12 to 35, obviously, you get more range in here. So that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a trade off. When I first got this lens, the first time when I had the demo unit, I was a little, God, am I going to use this lens or use the other one? And I've been using my 12 to 35 now because I haven't had one of these until today. Um, again, and I'm not I'm not sure yet what I prefer. I, I'm so used to shooting with the 12 to 30, the faster aperture, but let me put it this way: if okay, and obviously I understand not everybody can buy both. You know, if you could have this and the 12 to 35 and 35 to 100, clearly that's great because then you got best of both worlds. But obviously I understand that's money and not everybody can afford that. But if you can. It's nice to have the option of when you want that faster glass, and it doesn't matter how much you're carrying to have the two lenses. For me, I think that if I'm going to do a, a small trip where I'm just kind of vlogging, I'm not on a shoot, I'm just doing something like I'm going to go to NAB, which by the way, if you're going to go to NAB, drop me a line. I'm going to set up a little like coffee, get together, coffee, meetup kind of thing at NAB. Um, I'll be there Monday and Tuesday. Um, if you're going to go like I'm going to go to that and I'm going to take my GH5 and I only want to carry one lens, it'll be this lens because I'll get that extra reach out of it. I'm not going to be shooting in super low light. Uh, I think it'll be a better option for something like that. So, you know, it's just both awesome. Obviously, most people aren't and can't. So then you just really got to decide what's more important, that faster, focal, uh, that faster aperture at the long focal length, or would you rather have more range in a single lens? It's just up to you. All lenses are great, great quality to have, especially if you buy in the new 12 to 35, you get the new OIS system in it, so you get the same stabilization. Yeah. Either way, you're going to be happy with them. That's that's what I can say. That's it. I mean, this is a pretty simple unboxing. There's not much else to do. We took it out of the box, and there it is. Turned it on, and it works. Um, you know, don't know what else you want to see. T tomorrow's show is going to be fun. I did a, a little shooting with my GH5 on Sunday morning. It was supposed to be sunrise. <laughs> Sunrise never came up, sun never came up. We're gonna do a little video about how I shot on that, ingesting into the iPad Pro and editing in the iPad Pro. I have some really cool stuff about that. So uh, be sure to watch that one. Well, there'll be a link here. Be sure to check that video out. The next day, which would be, was tomorrow. tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, right? So there's a Friday's video is already set up as well. I've got a, had a lot of questions about accessing the VFR mode, the variable frame rate mode on the camera. People going, I, I can't figure it out. I can't get into it. So we're going to do a little video about that. I'm going to show you how to set it up and how to get into that mode. So that's Fridays. And next Mondays is the Q&A again. Look at that. I got like a whole next week planned already. Pretty fabulous. All right, guys. I think that's it. Let me see what's going on in the comments. No one else shouting out to me. So I think this is going to be a, a quicker, easier show. Um, oh, Bart says, I put small neon green post-its on the batteries that are charged. Just pull them off and toss them when you put them in the camera. But post-it notes can fall off. Watch my video. You'll like it. It's an even better solution. Um, more versatile solutions, put it that way. Uh, let's see here. What else is going on? That's it. That's it for people who've tagged me in the comments. I guess I'll take a moment to read through on the other comments here. Reverse, uh, Trevor saying reverse course on the 12 to 60. In the end for me, it's just going to be too slow. I get it. I totally get it. I picked up another fast prime, maybe to the 42.5 f1.2 instead. That's the Noctocron. Amazing lens. Absolutely amazing lens. Um, yeah. Clearly, the best choice is to have every lens. But of course, that's not realistic. Uh, but that Noctocron lens, that 42.5 millimeter f1.2 lens is the bomb. It is an insane, insane lens. It's not a sports lens. It is not a fast action lens. It is designed for portraiture. It is uh, has a, a long focus pull. So some lenses, you know, you you turn it just a little bit and you focus from near to far. The Noctocron is one of those where you you got to do this. You got to focus a lot, which means it auto focuses more slowly because it's got more movement to go through. But this is designed for that really hyper accurate focus. So when you're looking through the lens in your manual, you can really really dial it in. It's a little bit slower to focus, but Incredible, incredible lens. Okay, uh, Trevor saying 12 to 35 is a staple lens for a lot of people. Agreed 100%. Love mine. Jeremy saying, I went with the 12 to 35, thinking of getting the 35 to 70 uh, for second choice. Yep. Uh, 35 to 70. You mean the 35 to 100? Is that a 35 to 70? I don't know all the lenses. Um, waiting for the new 8 to 18, which is a 
rumored, speculated lens, I guess. I don't think there's been an official announcement about that. I haven't really followed up on that, but that sounds great. Uh, Matyaj is saying even the 14 to 140 doesn't have the AF MF switch. Yeah, I think that's kind of on the Leica lenses. I'd have to. Let me see. So the 12. Where's my other GH5? Where did I, oh, it's right here. So is this. Yeah, this 12 to 35 doesn't because that's not Leica. That one doesn't. The Noctocron does. I'm, I'm looking at it over there. My 15 is not here. I think the 15 has it. Maybe it's. it might be a Leica lens thing. It might be just the Leica lenses that have the manual focus switch on the side. I could be wrong in that, but I think that might be right. Uh, let's see here. My Life in 4K says, hopefully the B&H will let us know the shipping status. That's a good question. They probably will. Um, there you go. Let's see here. GH5 coming Thursday. Bart Johnson says, uh, production 50% charge is also the best storage voltage for batteries. If they sit too full or low of a charge for too long, they can be damaged. Lithium iron are more resilient, but lithium li lipos, li lithium POS, I'm not quite sure what you're saying there, will die. That's good to know. That's good to know. Good to know. Uh, talking about slider, saying I use the Edelkrone. I do. I love my Edelkrone. It is so cool. Such a cool little slide, a little pocket one. It's not in here. I'd grab it to show it to you. Um, all right, I guess that's it. Not a whole lot of people. See, I got my email from GH5. We'll be shipping on, or we'll be with you on April 5th from Amazon. Johnny Williams saying, excellent. All right, ooh, there's some more stuff down here. Sully saying, you're the man. Why, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Ramalak says, what about remote control video? I don't know what you mean, remote control. Like doing, you can control your video from the app, and I will do a show on that one day. Um, and you can control a lot of things from the app, which is really, really cool. I'm not sure if that's what you meant. Uh, Jorge is asking how to stream directly from the GH5 through iOS. Yeah, no. <laughs> There's no streaming. If you're talking about streaming like this kind of live streaming, you need not through iOS and you need to, because there's no way to, it doesn't happen. That's not a Panasonic thing. That's an Apple thing. And as far as if you want to use this camera to stream on a laptop, it's come up before, it's been asked, I'll repeat it. You, it, you can't do it out of the USB-C port. Unfortunately, the video does not carry over there. You can go HDMI out, but the HDMI port on your laptop is an HDMI out as well, so you can't just plug those two in. If you want to connect this camera as basically a webcam on your computer, then you need a device like the AV.io from Epifan. We'll put a link to that down below, so you can check that guy out. It's a couple hundred bucks, but it does turn any camera with an HDMI output into a webcam. So that is, it's worth looking at. I'm, I really like that device. It's rock solid, works every time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ralph says, picking up the GH5, trying to decide between a 12 to 35 to 8 or the 2514 and 42517. I know it's tough. You mean the 42, oh, the 42517. Also a great lens, not the Noctocron. That's the smaller one. All good stuff, man. All good stuff. I can't tell you what you should get, uh, you know. It's just what you want. It's just what you want, what you're using it for. Um, what you say, you know, okay, let me read the whole question again. He says he wants to hear my thoughts. Ralph says, picking up the GH5, trying to decide between the 12 to 35 2, 8, or a 25.14 and 42.1517. Still not sure about a wide option. I'm going wide. Primarily for documentary, would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, for documentary, I think having a Zoom is a good option because. With documentary, it's not planned, right? If you're a filmmaker and you're staging a shot, you can go, what lens should I use for this shot? You have time for that. When you're doing documentary work, it's like ENG, all right, electronic news gathering. It's run and gun. You don't have time to change lenses. You just got to use what you got. And that choice, in that case, having a zoom, I think, is preferable. So then it becomes, do you want the 12 to 35 or the 12 to 60? Are you shooting more low light where you want to have that faster aperture but give up the long focal length? Or do you want to have that longer reach? If I had to go out with one lens right now, that lens is going to be this one, the 12 to 60, just because it's got the most versatility. If I can carry two lenses and have the time to switch, it's going to be 12 to 35 and 35 to 100. If I'm on set where everything is staged and I can take all the time in the world, it's going to be a bag full of primes. So there you go. hope that helps. Anthony says, uh, are there any good off-camera wireless high-speed sync flashes about for the Lumix, Lumix ecosystem? Yes, L Lumix makes, Panasonic makes flashes that do high-speed 
sync off camera. So there's that option. There are other third party options. Um, I don't recall names off the top of my head. One of the other luminaries is a uh, primarily a wedding photographer and he has done quite a bit of work with third party flashes. So I will ask him which ones. I will make a note. Ryan, please make a note. I'll make a note about this to uh, look this up and get back to you. Maybe I'll do a whole show on it, but I'll have to get some lenses. But I can ask b &H for those. So, I mean, lenses, flashes. I'll have to ask b &H. But yeah, we'll do that. Let's, we'll do that. Okay, we have five minutes until the B&H show. Let's, anything else? Boo, boo, boo. Uh, oh, a couple more with my name on it. Uh, Fuse is saying the AT-18 is an official lens, announced the same time as the GH5. Well, there you go. I guess I can say it then. The AT-18 is, is an official lens, according to Fuse. Uh, Hero6 is saying, can you do a quick test with the stabilizer on and pan up and listen for rattle slash clicking that gets recorded? That's what happens with mine. Interesting. What lens? Hiro, tell me what lens you're using. Quick, quick. Um, let's see here. Any news on a Canadian release, Riverflow? I have zero idea what shipping dates are anywhere in the world, other than apparently they're shipping here and they were in Europe first because people there got them before the US people did. Achicha says, please talk about the M43 diffraction sometimes. Want to learn about this format more. You mean like uh, uh, what happened? Lens diffraction? Like diffraction errors? Is that what you're talking about? I'm not quite sure what you're asking about, Achita. Please clarify. Um, I missed something. Nope, that's good. Uh, oh, God, thing scrolled. Where are we? Um, do, 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 do. Okay, Hiro's saying again, GH5 still rattles and stabilizers on and pan up and down. So again, clarify what lens you're using. Like a 12 to 60. Like a 12 to 60, thank you. Um, okay, I will check that. Uh, Ryan's gonna write that down to make sure I check it and uh, I will check it for you. I don't know, I haven't noticed anything. I haven't heard any rattling. Remblack. Do I have, oh, do I have a schedule for video with the remote control? No, I haven't scheduled it. You want me to do that soon? Should I do that next week? All right, I'll do it next week. I'll put it on the calendar for next week. Uh, all right, last two. Zach says, still really excited for my GH5 to arrive around next week. Excellent. Can you tell me what a dead cat is on your mic? Or what dead cat is on your mic? This is the dead cat that's on my mic. This mic is the Shure VP83. This is the one that gets recommended with it. So if you look it up on B&H, get this crap out of the way. Uh, Shure, oops, spell that right. Oh, look at that. Just kidding. That's pretty good. I mistyped sure, and it still came up with a recommendation. Of course, it's not going to this time. Sure. That's funny. When I re when I mistyped it, it came up with the right thing. Here we go. This is it. The Sure Windjammer for the VP83 and VP83F. That's the one that I'm using. So um, well, that's a beautiful photo of it. But that is the uh, dead cat that I have on this camera right now. So it's great, works great, fits perfectly. I never take it off. Okay, that's it. That's the last question. It is like two minutes till the BNA show, which should give you time to grab a quick glass of water and watch the next show. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, go to BNH or bhphoto.com right now and you can tune into the live show about the GH5. Otherwise, that's it for me. You know the routine. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please like this video, that always helps. If you got a thumbs down it, do it, but please tell me why, be nice about it. And that's it. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for a little bit of fun with the iPad and the GH5. Take care, bye-bye.